Happy Friday, everyone. It's Kate Richberg, and it is time for Free Tip Friday here on beadshop.com. It's great to have you all here. Happy, uh, let's see, it's the 6th of January, so that means it's Armenian Christmas, Ukrainian Christmas, and Epiphany. So we're going to have an epiphany today with this project, but happy Friday, everyone. It's great to see everyone here. Uh, today, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to kick off my 365 temperature project. Now, I did a quick little impromptu um, uh, live uh, earlier uh to kind of show you all what I was thinking about. But now we've fleshed it out a little bit. We have some really great um, handouts and stuff to kind of help you along and let's chat about it. So let's see, there's so many people here, uh, which is awesome to see. Gita is, oh, Janice, you're doing the, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, I was going over there. Janice is on saying hello to everybody. And uh, people are jumping in from all over the place. Um, it looks like Nancy is going to do a round circle rope, rope with each ring in the circle being a hot, cold part of the day. And you're going to use it on your Christmas tree. I think that is a great way to do it. Um, I know that uh, Michelle posted in the group earlier today in our bead shop group, she's doing hers with Kumahimo. So before I talk to any or talk about any more of our projects, let me get right over here and say, follow us folks at, you can find us on all of our social at beadshop.com on um our Instagram page at the bead table on Facebook. And you can hit that like subscribe and notification button right over on our YouTube channel at beadshop.com. And the bead table, you guys is uh, so much fun right now. People are posting their projects. I made an album over in our group that is the temperature project album. And I'm going to re uh, share it today because I think some of you may have <clears throat> not seen it, or the more I share it, probably the, the more you'll see it. But if you go under files, um, you'll see in our file section, I uploaded these little charts that I made you. They're also in the project page for this project, right on beadshop.com. They were linked in this morning's newsletter and uh, they're on uh, the homepage on the website. Um, and in the album, in our bead shop Facebook group, you can post your pro your progress of your project. So whatever project you're doing, Michelle's doing Kumahimo, I'm doing round peyote, Drea's doing flat peyote. Um, some of you are doing herringbone, I think. Whatever it is you're doing, it doesn't matter. You don't need to follow the colors that I've chosen, nor the project I've chosen. If you just want to share, even if you're knitting something, who cares? Throw it in there. It doesn't have to be beads for this project. Um, it'll be fun to see how they grow. I'm going to post my process uh, about every month or so, so you can see how this, how it grows for you all. Um, let's see uh, if there are any other questions going on. Um, it looks like everybody's just saying hello and chatting away, which is great. So let me get to the project here, shall I? And let me show you what I've made. I've made a few little charts here. So you all can see, whoops, wrong way. There we go. So you all can see what uh, kind of the, the process, the thinking behind all of this. There we go. So these are linked, as I said, these are linked over in our project page. And it also has the list of everything I've used. Oh, and I see I just scrolled by our buddy Sarah Ayler is watching from Softlex. Sarah, two things. I'm so distracted by seeing my friends on the screen. Two things. We've got the Great Beat Extravaganza coming up where you and I are going to be presenting uh, that weekend. 
And I also have on the books, I need to tell you, I'm doing a great soft flex float necklace that's coming up soon. So, and you guys had your takeover day in the great beat extravaganza yesterday. It was fantastic. And thank you for linking one of our projects. We really, really appreciate that. Um, but now without further ado, back to the charts. So I did two things and, uh, oh, Nancy's asking hers is monthly instead of daily girl. You do you. That's the thing about this project is, and you know, I was thinking about it this morning um, when I was in the shower, which I, that's where I get my good ideas. I was thinking about it and, you know, not only this project, but all projects, folks, really all of our projects from Bead Shop, we want you, I'm pointing at you right now, to do you. Okay, so we just put these out there as suggestions. And if you want to follow them verbatim, do it. If you want to put your own twist, do it. That's the beauty of it. Okay, so yes, you do you. That's it. So um, here are the charts. So what I did was, and Christine, I know that you... Um, that you said on my post, Kate, there is no blue in there. Well, as you know, Christine, here in California, we don't get a lot of these colder temps right here. So I did do blue there, right? I don't, I don't think I'm going to have much of this. Maybe, maybe one or two blues, but the blues are there. Okay. So what I did when I decided these colors, the thing, so I was very scientific. I went to my box of ADOTs and I pulled colors I liked. How's that for a, a scientific method? And I didn't even really think so much about... Um, about the how it would look in the outcome, right? Like if you search, um, I know blue is my favorite color. I should have, but I am trying to break out of my rut, I guess. Not rut, but my habits, I suppose. So I don't want you to think too hard about this, right? We don't need this to be a difficult process, right? Just... I just went in and I made a little rainbow of color. Okay, like this. And these, I'll talk about these on the end here. But I made a rainbow of color of what I thought looked pretty, right? And then I didn't think too much about the temperatures either, really. I counted up. I, I actually had a few more. So I, I laid them down here, right? And then what I did was I went into Excel and I started doing temperature ranges. I just wrote them down like a, a range. And so my big range is going to be probably from the 30 to 34. I didn't go past 30 degrees, but then I was thinking, well, sometimes it gets a little colder here in central California. So that's when I added the blues. And then I went all the way up. We had some over 110 degree days here last summer. So I've got a range. And I did them in kind of, um, they're in four, you know, 30 to 34, then 35 to 39. So they're kind of even, right, in their, um, in their temperature range. But I did a lot of looking online. Like people do this where they embroider, um, it's kind of cool. They embroider little circles for the different colors. They quilt. My mom is saying she was thinking about maybe doing a quilt. You can knit, you can weave, you can do anything, right? And they don't have to be these particular weather or temperature ranges either, right? Like if you feel like you get a lot of days between like 60 and 80, maybe you want to break those colors up even more so you have more color 
right on um on your piece you know whatever and if you decide you want to add some more colors mid-year do it right doesn't matter so um <clears throat> so but if you do a search on like pinterest and you just type in temperature projects you'll see so many people have adapted it to whatever their craft is so the one chart this one has what i'm using and it's the peyote in the round it's a 12 bead start and i'm going to start another one um with uh, uh so you can see me started again today the thread i'm using smoke fireline in the um sample i did for you the other day on that little impromptu live i actually used the crystal fire line, but it was showing a little too much for me. So I moved over to smoke and I'm using the six pound. Okay. Which, uh, I'm liking a lot. I'm using a size 10 sharp needle, which is great. And then I listed everything here, what I'm using. And so I added that zero and below Michelle, you will probably, if you're doing this with your Kumi, you're going to need a few more colors below zero right? Uh, being in Saskatoon. Um, so then I just put the colors in that I liked, right? And so um, I laid them out, as I said, and I like my color rainbow here, and we'll just see what we get. Then I made a blank chart for you. Okay. If you want to do this, you can use the chart or you can use an Excel document or you can handwrite it, do whatever you want. But I thought I would make this for you. So you can put your technique, you can put your thread, you can put your needle, right? Then you can, uh, what I did on my tubes of beads, I just laid them out. And then I started with, uh, I just started labeling them with the, um, with the temperature range. And so you can put the bead, your bead number or whatever here, right? So you have this sheet to, um, to reference with all of your beads in it. You can add more. There's plenty of room to add other things that you may want to add. I added in mine, if it's raining, I do a band of the uh, 650, the dyed gray, silver lined alabaster, right? Sometimes we have wind events here in Fresno. So if it's notably windy, I don't know what notably windy means. I guess if I feel like it's windy, I'll put in a band of frosted opaque glazed rainbow ivory. If it's smoky and we do being in California, we get those wildfires here and it's been, we've had crazy smoke here. Uh, not right now, but it's happened, right? So it's a significant atmosphere event. I'm going to use Duracoat Galvanized Champagne. And then every month on the first, I'm going to do the bands of the Galvanized Gray Luster so I can see kind of each month. Some people like the colors to just flow into one another, right? Um, fog would be a good one. I might add fog, actually. I'm going to make a note on mine. Um, I may add fog. I'm going to add my note right here. Where did my pen go? I had my pen here a second ago. There it is. Fog is a good one, <clears throat> right? Oh, and these are in Fahrenheit. I did not do them in Celsius. I'm sorry. Maybe I should, right? Um, but I did them in Fahrenheit because we have such an international community. I, um, I didn't think about that. Um, you know, when I do charts like this and stuff, numbers, as my mom will tell you, aren't always my strong point. So, um, but uh, hopefully you can uh, translate this for you. Right, Thule Fog, exactly. Fog, I should add fog. My mom was also saying um, what she thought would be kind of cool, would also to 
give yourself like a check in with yourself. So, and this may be like a little too much for people if you, you know, have depression or whatever, but if you have like a significant day, like when you're super happy or you have, you know, I don't know, add maybe your feelings or emotions in there. You could do that too. I don't know. Might be kind of cool. Um, Christine is saying, I'm wondering how long this is going to be. Yeah. Me too, friend. Me too. Whoops. Sorry, JP. I'll keep my finger off that button. Um, who knows? Uh, Emily made me a super long rope for my 50th birthday. So if it's a super long rope, I'll just wrap it around many, many times. So we've got wind, I've got smoke, and uh, I've got new month. Some of you may want to add snow. Yeah, thunder and lightning, right? See, all of you who live in like places where you get real weather, though we're getting some real weather right now, thunder and lightning. I thought about thunder and lightning because once in a while, about once or twice a year, we get it. Um, tornado, hurricane, all of those things. So whatever works for you, um, you know, add it in if you want or simply do temperature whatever works for you. But this is the black, the, the blank one. And you can do this and, uh, and fill it in with your beads and then fill it in with your beads here. Then we go to this page. Okay. And so you can use whatever app you want to, um, follow the weather. I'm going to do my weather location at my home here in Fresno. So even when I travel, I'm going to um, do the weather here at this location, okay? Um, Drea asked me, she goes, well, what about when you travel? I'm like, well, I don't travel so much, but I think I'm going to keep it at the weather reading at this location. So what I did was I started on the first, and I'm using the app Weather Underground, but you can use any app you want or just note it from your phone. We all have a weather app on our phone. Um so I just look at it and what I usually do is like for today, for the, today's the sixth, I'll look up the sixth tomorrow and put the, the, um, the temperatures in. So this one on the fifth, I put it in low of 45, high of 59, um, Fahrenheit. So I'll look tomorrow and I'll put in the low and the high. Today, it's not supposed to rain. Yesterday, it did rain. Um, today should be pretty sunny, so it'll only be this here. And so you can just come in, and if you want to put in the colors that you used, you can put in, you know, there's room to put in, there'd be two numbers here, uh, the 43 degree and the 55 degree one, okay? So um, that's that's how you do it. And you'll just fill it in. And I'm not too worried, like, you know, what, am, you know, what if I get the temperature wrong or whatever, there's 365 days to this folks. So, you know, don't worry, just make it work for you. And Gail's asking, are we going to have check-ins periodically? Sure. I'll check in about it. And also it's going to be over on our group, the, our Facebook group, um, the bead table. If you don't do Facebook, um, we'll make sure to add it into the newsletter sometimes and I'll throw it on a free tip Friday periodically. And those of you who are creating, if you want to send me your photos and stuff, we can do kind of a little show and tell to show what everybody's doing and I can show them on air. Be kind of fun. So that's kind of how you use this chart. Again, there's no right or wrong way. Gita, thank you for that Fahrenheit to Celsius conversion. I appreciate that. So um, let's take a look. These, I'm doing all size eights. Okay, so let's take a look at the one that I've done here. Let me get a little tighter so you can see it. Um, you could do 11s if you wanted. Uh, 11s would work nicely as well. Uh, you could do that, but I chose eights because they're kind of fast. Okay. So this was my month start right here. And on new year's day, it also rained and there's my temperature range there. Here's my range here. It rained that day. 
this day, no rain, this day, no rain. So I'm just keeping going on here like this. So this is up till the 5th of January. Okay. So I'll do, um, my, uh, the one for today, I'll do that tomorrow morning. And usually I just do it when I'm sitting down to work. I kind of have this in my area and I'll just stitch my two rows. Cause if you're just doing two rows, it's just 24 beads. So it is super fast, right? So, uh, that's this here. Now, let me show you again. Now that I've been peyote in, in the round, I've gotten a little more nimble with it. Um, let me show you with some beads here. We'll do our start with our, our, our monthly start bead, and I'll show you how I do that again. Um, peyote stitch in the round, I think, is a nice one for this because it'll make a nice rope. And, um, you know, I could also do bangles, stop them when they're large enough to roll on your wrist. You could do a stack of wrists, you know, ba round bangles for your wrist. That would be cool too. Um, you could also weave this and do, or do flat peyote. That's what Drea is doing, right? So yeah, so my rain day, um, I'm doing a separate row. So if, let me explain this just a little, so it's a little less disjointed. What I did here on the day, I marked R for rain. If it's rain and something else, or if it's smoke and windy or whatever, um, I'll do that for each day. So this, so this day had the first actually had four rows because it was a new month. It rained. Then there was a low temp and a high temp. Okay. Same thing here. This has three rows because, and it's actually one, you'll see it when I do it. I actually do two bands per color. So it was actually two, four, six, eight rows. But remember in peyote, one row is kind of half a row. I'll do that here again. Here was just the two rows, the 47 and 59 here. Okay. So anyway, that's how you do it. So uh, I'm incorporating any special events in the band for that day. Okay. And you could split it up. I'm starting with low temp and then stitching high temp. That's how I'm doing it. But you could reverse them. You could do low temp, any event, then high temp, whatever. Okay. So for round peyote, and I chose 12 for this to put on first, right? Um, and, uh, when you put those 12 beads on, that is your first two rows. All right. So let me see if I can break it down for you here. I hope our picture is a little clearer today. Um, and I think with this getting closer with the zoom is a little bit easier for you to see, I hope. So I'm going to string on here. I just have KO. Remember we were talking with Janice on Wednesday and I was waxing a piece of KO to show how to do, uh, how to wax your thread. That's what I'm using here. I'm not using Fireline. So you could use either. Okay. And this is the bead I've chosen to start my month. It's the 8-1865, the gray luster. Okay. Which is kind of a pretty, a pretty little bead. So uh, let's put on 12, shall we? And I'm using the size 10 sharp needle, a sharps here. So that's six, right? Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Okay. So there's that. That's, those are my first rows. And you could put a stopper bead on the end if you want. But what I'm going to do actually, and I know that this is kind of sacrilege to some of you who seed bead, but this is my seed bead project. So I'm doing it my way. It's a little bit easier for me to deal with it this way. Because sometimes right at the beginning, sometimes my tension is a little funny. So it's hard for me to, to maintain that tension. So 
I'm going to collective gasp, tie a knot, just a square knot, right over left and down. And I do this when I do freeform peyote beads too, okay, like this. And then I'll go right over left one more time and tighten it down. I'm also giving myself a long enough tail so I can weave that in later, okay? So here, the, the knot that I've tied, it's pretty tight, but I still have a little bit of room here, right? It's not so, so super tight. Um, Janice has the question of where did I get the idea for this project? We've never done this before, actually. Um, I have a Pinterest page where I've been collecting these ideas in all types of different craft medium. It really started, a lot of people do this when they knit and they knit what's called a temperature blanket or a scarf and they knit a row or two rows or whatever it is for that day. And it, they're really cool. It's a really cool project. It looks really nice. Um, but I thought, you know what? I still, I've got some things on the needles that I've got to finish. There's no way I can start another project. So I thought, let's do this together and let's do it with beads. So that's how it came up. I wanted to do it last year. I had it on my list of stuff to start last year in 2022. But as you know, with our office move and all kinds of stuff, my, my focus was elsewhere. So this year, um, I have a friend who's doing it. She completed a beautiful 2022 embroidery project. And I said, you know what, I'm going to start it. So, um, yeah, it was good. Oh, I need to make it public. Thanks for sharing my Pinterest. I'll go in and make that temperature project page public too. I don't know if it is or not, but I'll, I'll double check it to make sure it is. So, um, so here's this. Okay. And I've gone through, you saw how I went through the row. Okay. And so now it's a little, since this is the start, it's a little more, um, it has a little more body to it. Okay. So let's add, it rained on the first day of New Year's. So I'm going to add my two rows, six around each with my color for rain. Okay. Yeah. I just do the knot when I start like this. And then when I add or take away thread, I, um, I weave it in and weave it out. Okay. So yeah, that's the only place I start that knot. So now remember what our mantra is. Let me get a little tighter in here. So it's real tight so you can see it. Let me see if I can zoom it in. There we go. We're going to start with, I pick up a bead and there's my thread. It's kind of marking my, my start and stop here. I pick up a bead, I skip a bead and I go through a bead. Okay. And what that does, as you know, you peyote stitchers out there, you know that this first row, when you put on that first bead, it displaces the bead below it. So this is actually, if we count them together, one, two, three, that's now three rows. Okay. It's pretty clear on my end. Uh, Maybe uh, refresh your screen, Lorraine, or let me know. I can also zoom out a little bit too, if that's a little close. Maybe that's better. Okay. So I'm going to come in, and you can see I've got a little bit of room here in my thread. So I'm going to jump, I'm going to keep going with the, those beads, put on a bead, skip a bead, go through a bead, right? And then what we have to do at the end of the round, after we put on our last bead, you'll see it here. I'm gonna go through that last bead there, 
like this. And now I'm going to step up to the next row. See that? Then I'm going to tighten everything. Well, hopefully it won't be too blurry on replay. I'm sorry about that. And then I'm just going to keep going. So that's my first, my first row. And then you can see how I pulled it tightly. I can come in and add. I didn't bring my chopstick out, but what I do have, sometimes it's easier to use like the end of a dowel or a paintbrush or whatever when you're first starting. It gives you a little something to hang on to here. Okay. Let me move that out of the way. That might be better. There. Is that better? Maybe that getting that rope out of there is better. Our cameras now are so intelligent that they do all that focusing for you. Let me keep stitching this here. This tail that's hanging out there at the bottom, after I do a few rows, because it kind of gets in the way as I'm stitching, I'll go ahead and stitch it in. Okay, so now it's pretty fast and easy, okay, to get that, get that in there once you've established. Let me do this last bead and then let me see if I can play with the focus a little bit. Go through that bead and then up. So there we are. So there are my first two, or actually this is four, first four rows. Let me get my hands out of there. Let me see if that, does that help? That might help. Maybe. If that's a little clearer. Then you'll just come in and you'll do the rest of your bands for that day. Okay. Um, Let's see, what does, how I started after the initial circle. Oh, okay, good. That is better. Great. So again, that initial circle is, we just start it. Can I pull this out? And you can go back and see it, but I know it was a little blurry. So we have a few minutes, so I'll start it. I'll take this out. Um, if you do make a mistake and you need to back your beads out, okay, what I do is I'll pull them out one by one this way. Okay, so let me pull these out. Then we'll go back to that initial circle and I'll show you one more time. When you're doing seed bead work and it's super tempting to send your needle back through the beads, you know, try and put them through backwards, right? Um, resist that temptation because you'll end up splitting your threads and you will kind of be in a mess. So just take your needle off the thread we do have a lot of, thank you, Janice, for sharing that over on Seed Bead School on our beadshop.com website. We have a bunch of peyote stitch projects. We have, Emily has done so many Seed Bead School things. So if you want to do this like with brick stitch, or as I say, herringbone would be good, um, any of those, you'll be able to find some, some information on how to start those. 
I waxed this thread so this eye has a little bit of wax in it. Also, this is all gray here. So remember, needle your thread. Come on now. I'm going to get a fresh needle. Yeah, Cindy's saying backing out may cause crying. It is true. Just resist the temptation. I did it. I did it again the other day. I'm like, I'm just going to back this out. And nope, I split my threads. So yeah, don't do as I say, not as I do, as I do. So again, here's the start. Here's our circle. Okay. And I'm going to come in. It needs to go this way with my stitching thread. I'm going to hold this other tail out of the way with my finger. So the mantra is put on a bead. We're going to skip that bead where the thread is coming out, that bead next to that thread, and we're going to go through the bead next to it. Then when I tighten, see how that takes that bead below it out of alignment, which is what you want. That's forming the first row. So you're seeing one, two, three rows here. Again, pick up a bead, skip a bead, go through a bead. And this first one, don't worry about tension so much. See, again, I've got a little bit of room here, which is what I want in my thread. And I'm going to come in and neaten it up. The first few rows of peyote always look a little wonky. So I'm picking up that bead, going, skipping a bead, then going through a bead. Picking up a bead. Skipping a bead. This is my last bead in the row here. Go through a bead like this. Then I step up and go to the first bead of that previous row that I put on. Okay. So now what I'll do here before I do that second row, see how this is kind of flat? I'll pull it. Get that thread of pull it a little bit so everything starts to come into view. This tail is my nemesis. There we go. Did I miss the last bead? Let me see. Did I go through it? I always, I have a tendency to do that. I think I went through it. Let me see. It'll all, it'll tell us on the next row. So I'll put my little, um, my little, I have a paintbrush here. Okay. So there should be six beads. One, two, three, four. Oh, there are. There's only five beads. Where is it? One, two, three, four, five, six. No, there are six. There's three. There's three. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Okay. So now let's put on that second row. And holding it with the um, paintbrush on the inside gives my, me a little bit of structure there to stitch around. Once I've gone kind of past this, I don't really need anything in the middle like the other rope. I'll pick up the other rope and we can take a look at it a little closer. So see, I'm just coming in. I'll turn this around. Okay. Stitch it through. And you just have that little opening there that shows you where it goes. So here's my final one. There's the space. Then I go through and I go through the next one to step up. Okay, so now I'm ready for my temperature row. Okay, and again, you can see that the, um, the tension is a lot nicer. And as you go, let me pull this one in. 
you can see this one here. And also I'm using Fireline, so this is a little stiffer. It still has some movement to it, but I wanted it to really have, you know, to, to have some, some body to it. So you can see for yesterday, there's my rain row, there's my low temp, there's my high temp. And you can really see the spaces there. I'm just going to come in and do my two rows um, for uh, today's temperatures when I do this tomorrow morning. So that's it. That's all she wrote. Okay, pretty pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, I'll give you another look at my rainbow here. But just choose. Whoops, let me zoom out a little bit. There we go. That's maybe a little too zoomed out. But mark your, your temps, um, you know, and see. Just leave them in a basket or whatever. My mom was going to put hers. She was saying you can put them in a little baggie and mark the baggie so you don't need to take all of your beads out of the tube. But I feel like I'm probably going to work through most of these tubes um, this year. I don't know. I haven't done this before, so... <laughs> So we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it all turns out. Um, I don't have white for snow, um, but you can add your white for snow because we don't have snow. I can see snow usually from the mountains. And maybe we might get a day where it snows for like a second or maybe hail. Maybe I'll add hail. I don't know. That wouldn't be too bad either. So um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, so folks, that is is my story. I'm sticking to it. I wanted to mention that uh, next week we are uh, inviting Emily. Uh, Emily's back. We're greeting Emily for the new year. Uh, she has the um, a really great spiral project that she's debuting with the size 15s. Our 15s um, uh, start uh, debuting on the website next week. And then we've got another launch of them coming close on the heels of those. We also have a brand new thread that I think you're going to like that we're working with the 15s. Um, so that's uh, going to be great. And I'll, I'll be talking about that a bit. Um, yes, I am wearing my opulent dusters. I love these earrings. Um, thank you so much. You can find them right on the website. You can find them there. It's a fun, fast project to do. Also, later on this um, uh, this weekend, I'm going to be posting uh, a quick little um, sneak peek of my The Great Beat Extravaganza project. Um, it's a wrap that I think you're going to love. The kids are going to drop a week from today on Friday and I'll be doing my great beat extravaganza, um, uh, presentation on Saturday. So you you'll see that on Friday. They'll drop, watch your newsletter. I have a limited amount of these kits because it's kind of a big kit. Um, but I'm almost done with the sample. So I'll give you a little sneaky peek of that. I think you're going to love it. Um, so that's what I've got. Have a fantastic weekend, all. I hope that this project has got some creative juices flowing for you. And please go over to the website, I mean, to our um, Bead Table group over on Facebook. Add your photos, if you'd like, into the photo album. I'll go back in and I'll repost it so you can see it. Or if you're not a Facebook person, just send them over to info at Bead Shop and Drea will send them along to me and we'll do a, we'll do a, a, a check-in show to see how we're all doing. All right, friends, have a fantastic weekend. Stay safe out there, stay dry, and I'll see you next week with Emily. Thanks so much, all. Talk to you soon.